संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पूरन पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुधा कल्पत रूपा रस चिंता मनी चार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा कर विचार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा कर विचार घनश्याम महाराज नी जय हरि कृष्ण महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम ऑल माइटी our beloved Gansham Maharaj, the path maker to our liberation, our beloved Pujibad Guruji, Puja Santo and all of you devotees, my humble Jay Swami Narayan. 230 years ago, Sriji Maharaj descended from his divine abode Akshardham to this earth, bringing certain principles and messages through these messages, Sriji Maharaj carried this fellowship through its growing pains and in result cultivated growth and formed its identity. Among the many messages that Sriji Maharaj revealed, the principles of Dharma, Bhakti, Gnan, Vairagya, etc. so forth. But all of these messages that Sriji Maharaj showed us were beyond ordinary but there was one you can say principle one message that he unveiled for us that opened everyone's eyes and that message was the Mahima of the Satsang Fellowship what does that mean Mahima meaning Mahima means the greatness the glory the importance of Bhagwan himself, his true saint, and other saints, and his devotees, their greatness. Now, speaking of importance or glory, just keep that word in mind, importance. I'm going to give you an example. Every day in our life, we have some kind of experience about something important to us. I'm not talking about a family member here. I'm talking about even a small, ordinary, day-to-day -day kind of routine. Everyone has to drive to work. And every time they're driving to that same highway, they always see a billboard on the right side saying that mega jackpot or today's lottery is for a hundred million dollars right then and there after seeing that billboard one's mind gets tempted to purchase a ticket of the lottery encouraged in their heart that I'm going to win this time I'm going to win this time I'm going to win this time keeping this in mind constantly while driving to the local nearest by gas station to purchase a lottery ticket. After purchasing a lottery ticket, first thing one does is goes into one's car and one has this favorite coin particularly, a kind of small superstition in one's mind that if I scratch the lottery ticket with this coin, I'm definitely going to win. We take that lottery ticket, take a coin and scratch it intensely enough almost so that the paper completely shreds but we keep it intact now the lottery is obviously played on the TV at night so obviously before time before that 8 p.m. sharp when the lottery numbers are announced you sit in front of your TV at 755 with that lottery ticket in your hand just waiting minute by minute until it hits 8 so then one can see if 
one's numbers match. And at that point, when the clock hits eight, your favorite lottery man comes on and starts to pick those balls out that are shooting in the air, one by one, speaking the numbers. After your first number, you get a little excited because it matches. After your second number, you get a little more excited. Third number, oh, this hasn't ever happened to me. Fourth number, all four numbers match. And finally, the fifth number, you're waiting there. Your heart is pouncing, thinking that it's going to be 16. It's going to be 16. It's going to be 16. And right there and then, he chooses the number, and it's 16. You can't believe it. You cannot believe what is front of your eyes that the lottery man selected the exact same five numbers that you have on your lottery ticket. You jump up and down. You tell your family. You tell everyone around the house. You're yelling like a crazy man that I just won a hundred million dollar lottery. Now, you've realized that that ticket itself, that stub of paper made from the woods, made from the trees of, you can even say, South America or wherever they get paper from. These trees, you develop value for this kind of paper, saying and shouting that I just won a hundred million dollars. I can't believe it. Now that piece of paper, just about four inches long and two inches wide you keep it in such an area you go up to your room you keep it in this drawer of yours your special drawer you put it inside very safely but throughout the night while you go to sleep you can't sleep you're constantly focused on that lottery ticket you have constant focus your mind keeps going to that you keep waking up after half an hour looking at the ticket if it's still there or not until the morning hits not only that but you put it in your pocket and you head outside each and every moment each and every step you take each and every time you're going somewhere your mind is constantly on that lottery ticket thinking that it doesn't rip in half thinking that it doesn't get lost thinking that something might happen where the lottery ticket might get wet and pretty much the paper completely deteriorate, deteriorates all these thoughts come to mind yet your constant vrutti your constant vision is on that lottery ticket how so because You've developed importance for that piece of paper. Not before the lottery. You didn't have any value for it. But after those five numbers matched and that fifth number was 16, you developed as much value as you can say as your own life, your own family members, or the ones that you care about how much so your possessions because you know that no matter how many electronic items you have or no many no matter how many iPads or iPods or how many phones you have you know that 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 single stub of ticket is more important and more valuable than that those electric items in the same exact way when one understands the glory of God, his true saint, the devotees in the satsang fellowship, then one's vision constantly becomes attracted to these three elements. It's like before when one did not understand the value. One did not even think or comprehend. One would just think that, oh, this is a mere statue. And this is just a saint, meaning this is just a person sitting on this cushion wearing orange clothes. And these are just people doing the like John Lowe's and wearing these wooden bracelets and putting a symbol on their head. 
And what is the value of that? I see many people like this. I see many statues like this. But when one understood the value that this is not a statue, but this is God himself. This is not an ordinary person wearing orange clothes, but this saint has enough power to liberate numerous souls from this illusion called Maya and elevate them to a level, a spiritual level, that they can constantly experience God. These are not regular devotees, but these are devotees that have value so much so that they live in this kind of environment outside experiencing all the kinds of you can say illusions the all the kinds of worldly pleasures of the world outside yet they stay beyond them and they worship god they follow you can say the vows of the satsang fellowship by doing the tilak channel by wearing the kanti by following the order and the co codes of conduct conducts prescribed to God himself meaning when one has realized the maima the glory the importance the value of these three elements one's life completely changes in such a manner that just like how that lottery ticket was on your mind after you won constantly until you registered it in to attain that hundred million dollars in the same way one's mind would constantly be attracted towards God his saints and his devotees so today's topic if you didn't figure it out yet is Maima or the glory of God his saint and his devotees and this whole satsang fellowship now I've defined this unique you can say topic unique principle, unique message of Sriji Maharaj, what it exactly is. But Mahima is actually the foundation of this whole Satsang Fellowship. When the word foundation comes to mind, the first thing or the first exact, you can say, metaphor or a kind of example that comes to mind is the Freedom Tower. How so? As of right now, in the place of the Twin Towers in New York City, the Freedom Tower is built. Now, before when the Twin Towers were built, obviously everyone knows the disaster of 9-11 and whatnot, but it took many, many years to build this, these two tw towers. And after that, after this incident, it only took not so many years but a few years to build the Freedom Tower how so because of the modern technology of today and also the architects and the brain that these you know construction people use to develop quick ideas to build the building but this tower itself is 1781 feet tall one of the most tallest buildings in the world now imagine if after pretty much cleaning the demolition site of the Twin Towers, how much foundation they would have to build again in order to build this one tower, the Freedom Tower. Obviously the foundation must have taken a long time. The foundation must have taken at least a couple of years just so that this towering building can stand upright 1,781 feet. In the same manner, you can other even see other towers, the tower in Abu Dhabi, Dubai, the Eiffel Tower, the Sears Tower in Chicago, Illinois. Such kind of towers stand on very, very firm foundations. In the same way, in satsang, one can stand, one can survive, one can live, one can develop oneself by standing on the foundation of maima or glory. Even Sadhguru Gunatitan Swami, after conducting his talks for 40 years in Junagar, 
his very first talk in the book called Swami Nivato, where he talked amongst many, many devotees and saints. And the saints and devotees narrated and wrote down his talks, and they made a book called Swami Nivato. In his first, his very first talk, Swami said that there is no greater endeavor than to understand the glory of God, his saints, and his devotees. Just imagine how much, you can say, emphasis, how much weight that Puja Swami has put on, on this particular topic itself. The reason for this lecture is for one to develop some kind of element in their life along the, you can say, the borderlines of this very topic, Maima. If one can understand that this is not something ordinary, if one can understand that this is a fundamental life stone in satsang, if one can understand that just like how this body possesses or this body needs oxygen to live, to survive, in the same exact manner, a person living in satsang needs maima to survive. That's how much value it has. Just think, if we were put into a chamber room and all the oxygen was extracted from that chamber room, how much time would that person survive? In the same exact manner. In the same exact manner. Satsang has the same kind of, you can say, weight. Or same kind of, you can say, empowerment on this topic, Maima. Now I'm reminded of a story in the time of Sriji Maharaj, just after Bhagwan ascended back to his Akshardham, there was a small brave child. Now, I want to talk to him, I want to explain the maima of how the, what chi this child possessed. But in that time, what Sri Jimar did was he sent his group of saints to various kinds of villages to preach about the glory of Bhagwan, his saints, his devotees, the whole satsang fellowship spread of the Swaminarayan sect and one time this group of saints were traveled to Jamnagar it's a district in Gujarat India and there they had gone to this village where they had met this boy named Dayo now Dayo was impressed by the saints sincerity their saintliness and he started to associate with the saints more and more he was not a devotee at first but after coming into contact, contact with the saints, he started to develop more and more satsang, you can say, more and more attachment to the saints. After some time, after understanding that these saints are actually saying the truth, after the saints talking and telling and preaching about the glory, the maima of Bhagwan and his saints and his devotees, the satsang fellowship, Dayo started to develop more and more satsang. And due to that, he started to put on Tilak Chandra. He started to wear the Ganti. He started to follow the vows of not eating onion and garlic, the vows of the five vows of a devotee, not to drink alcohol, not to eat meat, etc., so on and so forth, as a devotee, because he felt that this was the right thing to do. He felt that this was the right path. Now, Dayo would go on a routine of going to the temple, also doing these kinds of spiritual acts, and due to that, his father was observing. Now, his father did not say anything at first, but after a couple of months went by, he observed and saw that Dayo's behavior has changed. So at one time, he called Dayo, and he told him to sit down. And he explained to Dayo that this, what you're doing is not right. Our whole, you can say parampara, our whole lineage is of the Vaishnav Bhagwan or Vaishnav sect, meaning we do not worship Swami Narayan. So take off your kanti and pretty much erase your tilak chandla on your forehead and stop following the rules of the Swami Narayan sect. Because we are not Swami Narayan. Daya was brave, so he stopped. 
and told his father that I am unable to do this. I have firm faith and I have understood the glory of Bhagwan himself and his saints and devotees. So I am unable to do this. His father was not the normal father. His father was, you can say, tempered. Very much so that he took extreme means to try to break Dayo's faith. How so? Well, after hearing this, he commanded his servant to take Dayo to the farm and tie his legs around and pretty much dip him in the well up and down until he gave in, until he gave in on breaking his niyams, his vows, breaking his kanti, erasing his tilak chandla. And his servant obviously followed this command and took Dayo, tied his legs up and started pretty much torturing him in the water. After some time, there was light in the farm from the sky and Bhagwan Swaminarayan himself appeared and told the servant to let go of the boy. Bhagwan himself embraced Dayo and was impressed by his, by his bravery and told Dayo to be strong and keep satsang in his heart and keep going. Do not break. He gave him encouragement. He gave him inspiration. He gave him motivation to keep doing what he's doing. So then Bhagwan again vanished and the servant took Dayo to his father and the servant explained to his father that this is what had happened. His father could not believe it. So his father became so upset that he locked Dayo inside a room without any food or water. A couple of hours went by, then half a day went, then a whole day, two days, three days went by, and Dayo, a small child, did not have any food or water at all was still chanting the name of Bhagwan and did not give up on attaining God, did not give up on becoming discouraged because his father, he's not taking his father's side, but he's taking Bhagwan and his saint's side. And in that time, Maharaj himself appeared in, inside the room again and gave him darshan in one cannot believe what had happened, but it is what it is. Bhagwan himself, you can say, teleported him back to the village Gadara. And there, Maharaj told the crowd that this boy is like Pralad, and I want to make him my saint. And after a short time, Bhagwan himself made him his saint. Saying this, this reveals that even a small boy, if he gets into the association of a true Ekantik Satpurush, a true saint, like our Pujapad Guruji, just think about it. There are so many kinds of acts that Pujapad Guruji has performed that have changed the life of even the most wicked. I'm reminded of our Sanjay Bhagat from Georgia. Sanjay Bhagat, his life was a complete disaster in the past. He was a gangster, lived in New York, he used to get into fights, he used to not listen to his parents. But after listening to Puja Guruji's Katha just once in the car, he completely changed. He told his friends that I won't be able to hang out with you anymore. He got rid of his fancy clothing and his jewelry. He got rid of all his bad habits and became a staunch devotee. So much so, as of right now, he has a family in Georgia, he has a job, yet, as of right now, Puja Santo Aran Vicharan, meaning traveling in the United States, he has taken over a month of vacation without any pay, just to stay in the service of Puja Santo and drive them all around the states. This is the kind of importance that he has developed all due to Pujapad Guruji and Pujapad Guruji this is only one person I can name so many stories of how Pujapad Guruji has turned the most wicked to the most greatest satsangi one cannot believe in front of one's eyes 
but just to help you understand just to give you an idea that when one gets into the association of a true ekantik sadpurush one's life completely changes for the better and one sees this in the end sees the fruits sees the results in the end of one's life and if we had missed that exit of associating with such an true ekantik sadpurush then in the end of our life we'd also see the grief and we'd also feel the pain as well so today's topic was simple yet it was effective enough that one can even understand that by understanding the glory the maima the importance of bhagwan his saints and his devotees is the most important spiritual endeavor of all i suggest to all of you that you start getting into contact with santos in your nearby center if you do not you can also call santos here at loyada mandir nj you can also listen to live katha which occurs in the morning and also at night time and every year we keep these kinds of youth sibirs and winter workshops youth sibirs occur in the summer winter workshop occurs in the winter time in the december time now the december month of december is coming up and winter workshop is from december 25th to december 27th it's going to be here held at loyadam nj and you can register at the swaminarayan.org the registration form is there so please do make sure to register and tell your friends about it saying this my humble jay swaminarayan